So next job is quite a common one. It is a diverter valve replacement on the Worcester and clean out the plate heat exchanger. So the reasons you do that is when you run your hot water, the radiators get hot because the diverter doesn't shut off properly because there's marked debris on it. So it just doesn't close. So you need to replace the diverter valve, obviously ideally flush it. And the reason you'd flush the plate out or replace the plate, customer's gone for flushing on this one, is because the hot water fluctuates so all the debris that sits in the plate heat exchanger same as diverter that retains the heat so it makes the plate heat up really quickly shut the boiler off but obviously mains water is pushing through so it cools it down really quickly and puts the boiler back on so let's see how we get on with that So changing this diverter valve here, first thing I would do is isolate the valves underneath. So you're only going to be draining the boiler, not the whole system. And you've got two options, you can either pull the PRV, which is obviously easier on this version versions because it's at the back or you can drain it from here so I'm going to drain it from this drain off and use my wet back then I'm going to unclip this motor which is the diverter motor that's okay It gives us access to these two screws. Once you undo those two screws, it just pulls out. All the old arm and paddle out. See, there's a lot of muck on there. Look at the difference. This version has an arm and paddle version, which we just build like this. So, this goes into. Paddle just slots in there, doesn't matter which way it goes, and this just slides into there. There's a seal there, it's all attached to it, and your motor clips onto there. Easy enough to build. Pushes onto there as easy as that. Lift the line our motor up back with the paddle. Which is easily movable. Stop in. Oh, 
easy when you're not trying to do it with one hand. Use a little screwdriver to push that down. Whilst I push in. for this there we are and then we can just push back and that's all in place it's pretty much just two screws didn't have to change the motor on this one but if you do it just slots in and plugs in with the connectors there now let's do the plate let's access the plate we have to take the condense out and draw that down nice and easy access on this one once the condense is out sometimes you have to take the pump out because it's got the thicker plates there's just one screw there then there's two little hooks which i'll show you when it's out the screw can sometimes be a bit fiddly have a little bit of access under there as well though just to help out it's pretty poor condition just gotta give this a clean out. Have to say, this is one of the easier Worcesters to work on. Actually, they have changed a few things on there. This is the Combi Compact. So the plate heat exchanger is at the front, as you just saw. Diverter valve is now upside down. That was easy to replace anyway. They put the PRV near at the front. So these usual parts that go wrong are a lot more accessible now, which is a massive win. So well done, Worcester. Forgot to switch my alarm off, so now that's going off. Everyone probably thinks I'm nicking. Man, there's a mess at the moment. Right. Let's give this a bang out and some chemical. Many people use different things when cleaning a plate. Um, I know some people use brick acid. Some people just use cleanser, some people use the Fernox DS3. You can see all the bits in there. Hold on, let me show you. See all the shale in there? This is bloody strong stuff. It does a job. Try not to get it in your face or in your eyes because it is lethal. But as you can see, it's already starting to make some progress. It's one shot, drain cleaner. But yeah, you don't want to get this on you or on your face or anything. Sometimes I heat this up as well, just speeds up the process, but you can see that bubbling away. Luckily, I got water in my spray bottle, which I didn't think I did actually. Give this a pump. I like to do this away from the customer's property as well. It's not nice stuff, can stain and whatnot.
you can see all that black coming out so I'll cool this down and give it a big big bang just go this side now so remember that stuff went in pink that's all the muck and debris that it's picked up but yeah it's working fizzing along but it's working let's give this a little main splash now see what muck we can get out of there yeah it's looking good looks like we've got most of it few odd dregs you can see how much quicker it flows through there now and you can see how clear that is in comparison to what it was when I first started cleaning it there's no shale in there at all now I like to give these a little clean out reassembles in reverse order these lugs clip into them gaps there and then you've got a large screw here light is so handy tie it it's a new diverter cleaned out the plate drain off his back one in the off position so let's open it up and have a look back on obviously I'd isolated the hot water before I took the plate out it has to be drained and the best way to do that is open a tap downstairs with the isolator off water's back on no leaks we're all good condens needs to go back in and we can test we'll run the hot water make sure heating pipes don't get hot so we'll cold at the moment the little bit I used to drain the boiler was this. It's a little eddy key. You get a SID key as well for the smaller size. And that's from 8-Bit Ghost. It also does the probe adapters. Really handy. So hot water is running. Flow pipe is still cold. The turn pipe is still cold. So the diverter valve is not passing. No leaks. And the boiler is not cycling and cutting out when on hot water. So no leaks, hot water is running, it's not cutting out, it's staying at a nice constant, so the plate is clear. Flow pipe's cold, the turn pipe's cold, so it's diverter's not letting by, so that's sorted as well. So that's done, it's worked. As I said, there's two options with the plate, you can either replace it, clean it out a lot of the time people opt to clean it out obviously it's cheaper sometimes people just replace it because if the system's really bad it's just going to get blocked up again or we need to find the root cause of you know the system actually being blocked not just clean the plate and um, sometimes cleaning it doesn't work so you'll end up having to replace it more expensive you kind of have to assess how bad the plate is if it's you know easy enough to be cleaned out and take it from there but yeah let's go to the next one